Thanks so much for joining me today on the Vantage Point podcast. Michael, how are you? How was your birthday? I'm good, mate. Yeah, my birthday was lovely. Thank you. Nice and chilled. Didn't do too much. Just had some family down uh, from the Wirral. I mean, I'm 34 now, mate. So it was just uh, a nice chilled one. Not too much boozing. So, yeah. Well, Michael, you're, you're a man who trains quite a lot. And I wanted to pick your brain today about about your training, about the yep. sort of mindset you take into the gym and just to get a bit of your story, really. How is your training going right now? What sort of stuff are you doing? It's an interesting question that to ask me right uh, right this second. So my training at the moment focuses shifted slightly. Um, back in Jan, at the end of Jan, I was pretty much ready to the point where I was the biggest and strongest I'd ever been and was ready to start cutting down to hopefully see what I could get out of this year. And then my appendix tried to take me out. Um, so oh, it was... Uh, pretty lengthy recovery so at the moment i'm at the stage now where i'm just able to start putting my weights back up um so my motivation and my kind of aim at the moment is just getting back to that point where i'm confident in my own sort of like abdomen because i've got a belly full of scars at the moment um but yeah so i reckon give it another another four weeks and i think i'll be i think i'll be fighting fit to uh yeah to get back to throwing everything above my head again oh yeah anything um going yeah. on with your core it's like your your core your core being damaged or um or did you have a, I assume a surgery on it uh that's gonna that's gonna affect all your lifts isn't it oh mate so it was um it's unbelievable so i mean i did sports science in Bangor. um so my understanding of anatomy and physiology is really good and it's really there but even though my understanding and my knowledge was all there and the years I've been training, doing little things like uh, tricep extension with cables. I was just like, nope, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. Oh, Trying really? to get off the couch. I was like, nope, can't do that. So yeah, I can do more now, but uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit here and there. If I'm right, you, your style of training before was, um, or perhaps still is hypertrophy training. Would you call it bodybuilding what you've been doing? When I first started, it was very much just as the brands like Gymshark and um, we're coming out physique apparel. And it was all of that sort of like everybody wanted to be a bodybuilder. Everybody wanted to be shredded. So I would definitely jumped on that hypertrophy bandwagon and it has always remained my favorite. I've tried things like, um, like German volume training. I've tried a little bit of powerlifting for me. I intrinsically get more out of like positively get more out of the hypertrophy training because not to sound too much like Arnold, but you can't beat that feeling of just pump and walking around like you're just this absolute god of a person. So, yeah, hypertrophy training for me, again, everybody's different. But for me, the intrinsic kind of reward from that is just, it, it feels so much better to me. So, Yeah, I imagine it's not even in just the way you look either. It's in uh, the way you end up carrying yourself when you your lats are developed, when your chest is out. Your mm. posture is going to be different, isn't it? Where the more your your back's developed and um, it does make you walk around with your head up more because there's more support in muscles just without you even thinking about it, keeping your posture right. You know, you see people with like um, bad postures, people who sit down all day, they're hunched over, they've got no all muscle wastage in their back. Yeah. And, if people ask me sometimes like what, what can I do to make my posture better I've seen you can do this stretch or this stretch and it's like the best thing you can do is strengthen your back muscles and build your muscle so that it's, it's retracting your shoulder blades without you having to yeah. con consciously think I have to stand up straight oh mate 100% like for me the biggest and I was almost that way for a long time um but the biggest underutilized muscle in a lot of uh people who like the bodybuilding style of training and you see them they're walking around they're all like this walking around but their rear delts i mean their traps are there but their rear delts are really lacking which is causing them all to like roll forwards and they don't look full and they don't. and again yeah it's uh yeah you're right mate yeah you are right there training yeah, the back because it's on the back out just, out of sight out of mind <laughs> mate it's like it's like people's calves if you wear trackies in the gym you're gonna you're not gonna train them would you agree that um, hypertrophy training then is, is quite an accessible way for and probably the best way uh, in my experience to get into lifting weights because it teaches you the sort of the basic form for 
exercises strict form and teaches you mind muscle connection how to isolate a muscle how to target different muscle groups would you agree that's a good way for a beginner to start to get into lifting i couldn't agree more i think if you're building a house you need to build a good strong foundation and you do get a lot of beginners that will go straight into powerlifting or crossfit and without having that good foundation and you find that they're, they're going to get injured really quickly um so that having that hypertrophy like you said a lot of isolation in it and you don't have to like start throwing the weights up you can with hypertrophy you can stick to really light weights and just do a million and one reps and you still get you're still going to get a lot of benefit from it um i completely agree mate for beginners in my own personal opinion hypertrophy training is the best entryway into lifting weights some people yeah. within other disciplines will disagree with that i would definitely say the science is there to back to back that so yeah i see so many people going to like they'll start to get into the gym and they'll be like right i've not got much time for this so all i'm going to do is is intense hit classes or snc type stuff and just absolutely blast my body once a week maybe with bad form and not take the time to actually break down and, and learn each exercise one at a time because when you're in these hit classes um you know the instructor although they can help you as you're going they haven't got the time to individually teach everyone how to do you know strict yeah. form on each of these exercises in fact they're encouraging you to push yourself as much as you can and get as many reps in as you can so you, you know people need to invest time into especially when they're starting to learn in how to get these exercises right mm. absolutely mate absolutely and he, yeah because i mean i've i've done the whole kind of hit class thing as well during cutting and stuff and you find they're like right so you're going to grab this weight and you're going to do this and we're going to do this and they'll scream at you and be really encouraging keep going keep going keep going but the form even when your form starts going it's very much push 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 um when you are doing the hypertrophy training you get to learn your body so much more and that mind muscle connection grows and for me like when i first started I doing hypertrophy training it was very evident to me that if one say like one half of my body was say if my left arm was weaker than my right arm it was very evident because you have that hypertrophy you can isolate different things and you're focusing on what you're doing and yeah which i think you do lose when you are doing other types of training that tend to focus on just do more so yeah yeah, yeah. Focusing on like the movement more than uh, what you're actually doing and how, you know, is your joint able to move that way? <laughs> Can you have you built up the strength in your joint and your muscles so that you're able to perform these reps? Tell me then, did you have anyone to sort of look up to like when you started your fitness journey? Did you have maybe a personal trainer or like a friend or, or someone who could show you correct technique when you started? I didn't start in DW. I started in a little back alley gym called Hardcore Gym, which was down in Lower Banga by Dean Street. It was very much a gym where everybody was the size of a mountain. There was a, fe a fellow called Gethin that was in there who saw me in there, saw me training, saw my form was a little over the show and then was very much like, you're lifting too much weight. Come back for this form. I did a little plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was ego lifting, mate. I was. I was it. You know, I just put on like my first ten pounds of beginner gains and was like, yeah, I can, I can lift this. I can lift this. And I was shoulder pressing. One arm was going back here, and the other arm was going elsewhere. Um, and oh, he man. really stressed the important. He really stressed stressed the importance to me of like form warming up because enough people don't warm up when they go into lifting. They'll just go and throw a load of plates on, or they'll go and grab the big heavy dumbbells. Um, so I did look up to him quite a lot. And then I did move to DW when that little gym closed down. And you've probably met him yourself in there at times, but there's an old boy called Derek. I don't know if you've met I've him. I've seen him in there, yeah. Um, I've seen him. You've seen Derek yeah. in there, yeah. So uh, I was just going through the motions, doing my training thing, because I like every little bro bodybuilder when they start, Arnold is the god. And watching all of his videos, watching all of... Um, like Matt August's videos and like Steve Cook's videos, like they were all massive for me. But then in the gym, it was very much, I'd look at Derek and he wouldn't always be in there for the longest amount of time, but he'd always be focused on what he was doing. He'd always do exactly what he needed to do, focus on that body part. And you'd see him looking at the muscle he was trying to work, getting that mind muscle connection. And I really, that, that really hit home with me because he was like, if you can't feel it, in the place you want it and you're feeling it somewhere else you're not doing it right at that point it's time to maybe 
go back on the weights you're lifting and, and go back to a weight where you can lift it with good form and um, maybe then feel the muscle and then slowly progress back to the weight you, you could do when you couldn't feel it in the muscle. Fallen guilty to this many times, especially when you're in a gym where there's a lot of people that there's almost this image of you where it's like this, per, or you think there's this image of you where this person always lifts heavy, this person always trains hard. If you're not feeling a certain thing, it's okay to take a step back and just work and work on those foundations and then build forwards. Like I say, I've done it before where I've ego lifted because there have been other people around and I've personally thought I have to keep this image or this perceived image that I think there is where I'm just training like a maniac, lifting heavy weights and walking around just like shredded, massive. And you don't need to. Ego plays a big part in the gym and I think a lot of people need to know when to when to leave it at the door and focus on yourself because especially as I'm getting older now, my health and well-being when being in the gym and when I'm training, if I get injured now, it takes me a bit longer to recover than it did when I was in my 20s. So, yeah, take mm-hmm. you, you're absolutely right, mate. Taking a step back, lighter weights, focusing on the form is is 100% key. Do you think it's a wise choice then for like a gym beginner to pay for personal training sessions or at the very least find someone who who has a really good knowledge of training that can show them the ropes because I felt like I wasted so much time early years, um, you know, watching YouTube videos, trying to follow like Instagram workouts and, and seeing people who I thought looked like they knew what they were doing. And then realizing years later, they actually had no idea what they were doing and they were just the sort of genetically gifted ones. I feel like I wasted a lot of time in that way. And it was only a few years later when I found uh, a couple of people who really showed me the ropes with it. And it's like, damn, I wish I'd met that person a few years earlier. Do you think people should, um, aim to to get a PT on their side when they start? It depends how you best learn, I think. You're right, there are a lot of fitness influencers out there who absolutely don't have a bloody clue what they're talking about. There are some that are spot on, but it's knowing which one is which. So if I was a beginner going into the gym now, I think, or my advice for people going into the gym now is if you can go with a friend to start off with, someone who's been the gym a little bit, or if you know someone that's been a little bit to low, learn the ropes, I would definitely say that is a better way to get in there because as soon as you're in there, I learned the most from looking at other people in the gym, looking looking at the bigger lads in the gym, asking them questions. A lot of people are shy when they go into the gym because they see these big lads, headphones in, normally with um, a good old resting bitch face, just completely focused. Most of them are absolute puppy dogs and are dead lovely. And if you ask them for a bit of advice, they're always welcome. They're always welcoming. If you're not confident enough to do that, provided your PT absolutely knows what they're talking about and has got a very clear track record and bike track record, you can tell a good PT by looking at the PT. If you want to go and do weights training, if your PT doesn't look like they do weights training, as in like any sort of way, like if they don't look functionally strong, would I personally go for that PT? Maybe not. And I mean, Mm. you've, you'll have seen it. You go into gyms and you've got a PT who is, what looks like they would make a great triathlete and be great for cardio and that sort of stuff, but they're teaching weights. And then sometimes you look at them and you're like, "Mm." so yeah, to answer your question in a short term without beating around the bush for beginners, getting a PT that suits your style of training isn't the worst idea in the world. It's just making sure that your trainer knows their stuff. And I guess the only way you're going to know that is actually by doing some sessions with them. You're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but if I was going to hire a PT, I'm going to go for the PT that looks like they're training the way I want to train. Yeah, if you want to be a bodybuilder and you're being trained by someone who's smaller than you, it's probably not a good uh, indicator to where you're going to end up, is it? (laughs) I mean, I've never really had a personal trainer. I'm very much self-taught and asking people questions and stuff because my learning style is very much I learn by doing and watching people do stuff. So I'm I'm mm. I'm, I'm a pretty good mimic when it comes to that sort of stuff. And then I learn by doing because I'm very kinesthetic learner. But some people do need that kind of auditory sense to it as well, where you're being talked through it. And when you're new to the gym, it's hard to weed out the people who who genuinely know their stuff. Like you can tell that later, like once you've been training for a few years, but when you're new to the gym, it's hard to, to, to figure out the ones who genuinely know what they're talking about and the ones who are waffling, like really waffling. And um, yeah. they're, they're, they're maybe the genetically gifted ones or just the ones who have a few more followers. But yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to, to know when you're starting, but I, I think you're right in what you're saying. Find someone who 
looks like they have a pretty good idea uh, or they look like they're capable of the type of training that you want to do. You know, if they look like a good triathlete, train with them. You know, that's the only thing you can really go off. Just be a bit wary if it's someone who's really big because you don't also know how they got that big. They might have got that big through what kind of nefarious ways, maybe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You've hit the nail on the head there. You want to make sure your PT isn't going to try and persuade you down a path of um, of no return. I suppose is the is the is the most diplomatic way to say that I reckon. <laughs> what what got you yeah. started then? Like, what was your initial motivation? Because twenty six is fairly late, isn't it? Like, I, I would have thought you were into it back in in school or something. Um, what no, got you into it at that age? So I've always been into the gym. When I was younger, I did a lot of martial arts from when I, from the age of six till I was about twenty one. I noticed after kind of uni. As everybody does in uni, they put a little bit of weight on because of uh, all of the parties and whatnot. I got myself into the gym a little bit more functionally fit between the age of 21 kind of to 26 as a way of keeping myself fit for my job Um, because I'm a water sports instructor, uh, teach sailing, windsurfing, that sort of thing. So I needed to be physically fit to drag boats around and stuff. Um, So I was always in an okay-ish sort of shape, but then there's an old saying, breakups make bodybuilders. So... For me, initially, getting into the gym was very much an outlet and a bit of therapy. It still is every now and then, to be honest. Um, It's an outlet and it's a way for me to manage my mental health. So I got myself into the gym. It took my mind, doing going through the motions, focusing on something else, got my mind off anything else that I could have been thinking about. It stopped me from maybe going out and drinking instead and making some poor choices. And then from there... You know, you notice you're starting to look good. And when you start looking a little bit better and people say, and I know a lot of lads will go into the gym to try and look good for the girls. The first time you get someone in the gym, another lad turn around to you, oh, your shoulders are looking good, mate. You're like, cheers, mate. <laughs> and then you push yourself more. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a breakup that got me into the gym. What kept me in the gym? One was that intrinsic value of wanting to look really good. When you start feeling stronger, you want to start pushing yourself so your goal shift. But for me, it's always been very much a way to manage and keep my my, my own mental health in check. Not that I've st- ever struggled with it too much. But yeah, the endorphins released when yeah. you are hurting yourself almost, but from like in, in the gym, like breaking muscles down, stuff like that. It, it, it's a rush. Oh, sure, yeah. It always made it always made me feel better. So guys, don't be don't be don't be shy. Go and compliment. <laughs> other guys in the gym it's cool you know it's cool we, we appreciate uh, it mate, yeah. <laughs> yeah i do it to my I, my mates all the time if they're doing well in the gym it's one thing oh, to say yeah. oh it's like that lift looks strong mate but you know as soon as a, a lad compliments another lad in the gym especially if that lad is one of the bigger lads in the gym as well hey you looking you looking you know like you've put a bit of weight on mate you know you're looking good first time you hear that you're like cheers mate thank you <laughs> obviously that's been a huge i imagine crutch for your mental health have you had any issues since starting training where there's been some some mental battle you've faced that you've had to get through or has it been a steady slow progression up there's nothing externally from the gym that have i've had to battle with not really mentally until uh, my appendix in right. the gym though if people say that they don't experience this at some time after training for years they're absolutely I'm not going to swear, but they're full of rubbish. They don't get to a point where they get bored in the gym. There's only so long that pre-workouts and lifting and diff- shifting up your training styles can keep you feeling fulfilled and occupied, which is why a lot of people do switch from, oh, I'm going to try powerlifting now. Oh, I'm going to try crossfit now. I'm going to try this, this, and this, which I think is a great thing to do. Um, if people say, yeah, I, I mean, for me, I basically got to the point where I was going through the motions. So I wasn't making, I wasn't making gains. I was going for the sake of going because I didn't want to lose what I already had, but I wasn't enjoying it at all. Right. And when that did happen, it was it was a big mental block for me because going to the gym was a chore instead of oh I get to go to the gym, which and I've, I've, I'm all, I always get pumped about going to the gym, but it was very much like oh, I'll go to the gym now. Um, you know, here's what it is. I'll get it out of the way with. I was training in a more commercial gym. And because to be honest, I went into those gyms because I was like, I'm training my ass off. I'm looking good. I've got an audience. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't fulfilling me. And I basically was like, I don't need that anymore. I need to take myself back to where, for me, where that bodybuilding kind of training journey started, which is in a dark, cast iron old weights school, gym. Old school gym. 
old yeah. school gym where the music is that loud that if you've got noise cancellation headphones, you're still going to end up with your ears ringing at the end of the session. Um, just where people train to train, not training just so like, oh, there's girls over there, they're looking at me do this. Oh, there's these lads over there, they're looking at me do this. I just needed to be in a place where I was isolated to train. And that really got me through it because when I put myself back in that environment, I was like, this is what I need to keep doing. This is, I need to keep doing this style of things. And that did get me back. And then uh, literally just before, because I'd been trained down at Barbell in Bangor and I, I absolutely love training there. Um, and I posted almost like an update just, I must've been maybe like a week before I ended up in hospital with my appendix of being like, this is how I was a few years back at Body Power when I was almost, when I was pretty much ready to um, step on stage for like a fitness thing. And this is me now. And one of them, I'm um, shredded, looking good. The other one, um, you know, I'm I'm blown up. I'm big. A little bit of fluff around, but I'm at that stage where I'm re- I was ready to cut. I had some size. I was feeling good about myself. Now. And I got back to that being in that environment. When I ended up in hospital, I was like, oh, it'll be fine. I always heal quick. This will be over um, real soon. Recovery time after that, what a lot of people don't tell you, with operations, like we said before, with your abdomen, it only takes if you if it's healing and you do something too quick. And admittedly, I, I was told I could go back to the gym and do very light weights. I did not. Uh, <laughs> um, I went back in and I sat down and I was like, I'll sit down because I'll keep my core out. I'll keep my core out of it as much as possible. Slight incline. Um, I put some weights above my head and I was like, yeah, these actually went up because my shoulders hadn't lost too much strength. But engaging my core like that, when I stood up, I could feel that I just, you know, there was a slight too hernia soon. or something forming. It was too soon. And I literally yeah, there yeah. and then I put, I did my best to put the weights back where I got them from and I left and I was like, right, that's it. So I did spend a lot of time not hating on myself, but when you're able to do something so well for so long, not being able to do it, it crushed me. Frustrating. And it yeah. did. Oh, mate, fr- frustration, frustration for me. I'm a bit of a fidget as well. You probably noticed, <laughs> well, people will notice if they watch this. I'm like, I'm doing this, I'm fixing my hat, I'm like moving backwards and forwards. Um, I'm a fidget. So if I'm not occupied doing something, I'll fidget and I'll get frustrated. And I was getting very frustrated. And the only thing that's really sorted that is, you know, I did start doing very light sort of band work and stuff like that at home to get mm-hmm. myself ready. I was able to go back to the gym and then getting signed off to go back to teaching and stuff again, uh, sailing and whatnot. That's really helped. Right. Um, yeah. And now I'm able to go back to the gym and start lifting again. I haven't been the last week because I did two weeks solid of training, felt good. I felt a small twinge. And for me, last thing I want is to be in that frustrated position again. So yeah, yeah play, it um, safe, play it safe. Like I say, I, I don't want to be in that position where I'm laying on the couch, just feeling sorry for myself. It's interesting what you said about going to the that, the old school gym and uh, it just feeling different and you're feeling more like back to where, where you started. Um, I bet it's the same because a lot of the people in that kind of gym, like they're serious gym goers, they're all serious gym goers. And when you spent a bit too much time in a commercial gym where maybe maybe you're the biggest guy in there, maybe not, but maybe probably a good chance you're the biggest guy in there when you're training and you go to one of these old school gyms and everyone's just huge. <laughs> it's like that must be a bit of a motivation as well. Um. I know Anthony Joshua recently, you know, the heavyweight boxer, Joshua. Yeah. Um, he's done a similar thing recently. I think he's sort of been a bit out of it lately in his recent performances. I don't know if you keep up with it, but he's gone to like his old school gym in, in Texas and he had all the works in the UK, you know, like he had people waiting on him hand and foot. And uh, I think he needed to remove himself from that and throw himself back in the deep end, like where he started to something that sort of brings you back down to earth a little bit. And uh, it's interesting how your environment can affect, affect how you train. Absolutely. Um, and it very much, you, you've hit the nail on the head, what you said, really. I went back to, uh, you know, a little back alley gym and now I'm at Barbell. And f- from being in a gym where, you know, I was the only person touching the, like weights, like the 40 kilogram dumbbells up, I was the only person grabbing those. So it was very much a, like, I'm the biggest guy in here. And going back to gyms where you're not the biggest guy and you're not the strongest guy, it's humbling and it gives you that target to aim towards because at one point you were up here 
and now you're back down here and now you've, your glass ceiling has kind yeah. of moved so you've you've got that target to aim towards and it does bring that fire back in your belly and it did with me I mean after after and I've lost quite a bit of size since the surgery and stuff and more than ever now because I'm able to go back I'm looking at other people in the gym being like you're big I'm going to be bigger than you or you're strong gonna get you. I'm going to be stronger than you <laughs> and then yeah. in the gym I go to in Barbell you look at the girls and then you're like I'm never going to be as strong as you because <laughs> uh, they're all fair play they out train the lads like crazy in that gym so it's good to see <laughs> um Michael we're running out of time we've only got a few minutes left so I wanted to end on you know, this um give me give me one piece of crucial advice for someone who may be just thinking about starting their fitness journey today, what's one piece of advice you would give them? Don't run before you can walk. Don't run before you can walk. And that's quite vague, but like we said earlier on, build your foundations. It's okay that you want to go and get big. You want to get shredded. You want to look good for holiday. You want to get strong. Build the foundations first because a strong house, I mean, you get houses now that are hundreds of years old. Why? Because they've got strong foundations Build those and you're setting yourself up for success. Build weak foundations and jump in higher up and your body's going to crumble when you're older. Perfectly said, man. Perfectly said. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we're out of time for today, man. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, No cheers for having me, mate. 